Hello and welcome to the first in a series of videos that's aimed at helping all of us within Soundstorm to be able to record videos for children in uh, lockdown and maybe even those who are in their classrooms and also to be able to present anything that's on the screen of our computer to those pupils. So by the end of these videos you'll also be able to combine that material into a complete presentation for pupils. So today's first video is all about the Mac. It's about recording your screen and also producing the audio from your screen and also from the microphone and combining them all together. There's one piece of software to download and a few settings to change. What I suggest you do is to watch the video right the way through. Don't worry if you're a bit confused by some of it. There are also some notes to accompany the video but do go back then through it and just pause the video wherever you need to in order to check out the settings or the downloads that you have to complete in order to make your computer do exactly what you're seeing this one do. So good luck with the videos, do send in any queries that you like and I hope you enjoy them and find them useful. So first I'd like to show you what you're going to be able to achieve once you get through the processes I'll describe in a while. Here we've got uh, a list of slides and we've got, as you can see where I'm pointing here, uh, some backing tracks. In fact, I've got a, a slow version, a practice version, and I've got a performance version. So I'm going to make this uh, slideshow go live and I'm going to play the slow backing track. I can stop that. Now my pupils are ready to try the performance version. They've improved incredibly quickly and here they go. And now they join in. Well that's enough of that. So uh, as you can see it's quite possible now for you to work your desktop with the sound that's there and at the same time to be able to speak. So let's see how we do this. First of all, you'll need to select a number of keys on your keyboard. These are Command, Shift and 5. When you press those, you'll immediately see this toolbar come across your screen and the button we're interested in is the one that says Record Entire Screen. And then when you actually click the Record label on the far right of that toolbar, your recording will start and whatever you do on the screen at that point, even if you move between one program or one uh, website or another, that will continue to record whatever is going on. And what we're going to set up next is the ability for you to actually make sure that not only the picture is recorded, but also the sound that could be the sound on the computer but also whatever you say, so through the microphone on the computer. And we need to do a few things to make sure that that will happen. So at the bottom of this video, you'll see some links, including this one, which is to a website called GitHub, not beautifully named, but uh, the installation instructions for the vital piece of audio software. In fact, its proper name is a virtual audio driver, but we don't need to be worried about that. Uh, it's called Black Hole, and it's actually got 16 channels. You could actually put 16 different inputs of sound into this, but we'll only need one. So let's just see what we've got here. First of all, there is a link to download what it says is the latest installer. And when you go for that, you will see that there is a place to put your email address and your names in. Uh, I've used this and others have many times, and I don't think you're going to be finding you get any spam or any other unpleasantness out of this. It's a genuine uh, developer who's produced this for everyone's benefit. So let's just go back to the uh, installation page. You'll be receiving an email once you've collect, uh, completed that form. And then on that email, you'll be able to click 
the download to install this particular piece of software. Now it's quite important to follow these instructions carefully. If we move to step two, you'll be invited to save that file to your download folder. And then when you get to step three, good idea to close everything that may be running on your computer already, just for safety's sake. And finally, and this is the important step, step four, to right click. Well, on a Mac, this will be uh, to press the control uh, key and click and then you'll get a different menu that says open. Now sometimes with third-party software uh, the Mac doesn't like to install that, it wants to get everything from Apple or from another known source. You may get this warning which says uh, are you sure you want to open it, it's unidentified and you're going to of course say yes otherwise you're never going to get this. Then you'll go through the normal process of installing software and hopefully you'll get a nice green tick at the end to show that it was successful. Now you may wish to pause this video for a moment while you take on board what's happened so far. Um, the next few steps are probably a little bit more complicated. We want to check that that download and installation of uh, the black hole audio driver has actually taken place. So I'm going to move up to the top of the screen and I'm going to look for my speaker icon. Mine's going to look a bit different to yours because I'm monitoring this on headphones. So where it says headphones, yours may well say at the moment internal speaker or something of that kind. I've got a few more entries, some of which we're going to require in the course of this video while we have your computer ending up looking like mine. And at the moment, you should just see that entry for either headphones, if you're using them, or internal speaker, and another entry, black hole 16 channel. The others won't be there unless uh, you've got your computer connected up to other Apple devices. So down at the bottom, we also have some, something called sound preferences, which we'll come back to in a moment. Just for the while, check you have got black hole 16 channel in there. That means your installation was successful. Now, we're going to have to do two other things so that we can get things like screen record with audio as an entry here under this speaker icon. So in order to do this, we go to the spotlight icon here and we click that and start to write in uh, audio MIDI setup. And you can see mine's already coming up. So I'm going to double click that. And you can see that at the top, I've got some entries, built-in microphone, built-in output, black hole 16 channel. You should have those three now. And I've got two more. So what this is about now is getting these in place. And those will finally enable us to be able to record the audio on your computer screen or from your computer screen and also to be able to talk over the top if you wish to through the microphone. So I've already got these entries so I'm going to just create um, one more just like this one and you'll see how this works. To go to, to make one of these entries I go down to the bottom to the plus sign and for the first one I'm going to select create aggregate device. So now I've got this entry with this blue background and the cross. So that's the same as my QuickTime player entry there. Just going to show you how I did that. I double clicked the rather unattractive description of aggregate device, which doesn't tell us an awful lot other than it's a mix of things happening. And I began by typing in QuickTime player on that. Now, I don't actually want another one of these entries, so I'm not going to go ahead and complete that one, but you can see where this is going. When you've got that entry, and I'm just going to get rid of mine now by clicking the minus button, if we look at what I actually put in, I've got QuickTime Player, and there are some check boxes. You need to check built-in microphone and black hole 16 channel. Don't select built-in output. So that's your first entry, like the one I've got there. Now to the second one. Now this one, screen record with audio. We get that by clicking the plus sign again, 
but this time instead of aggregate device I'm going to click create multi output device and you can see it looks very much like the one I've already got so again I look at that one and I've got some check boxes um, I'm going to rename it just like I did the one that said aggregate device and I made it become a QuickTime player I'm going to call this screen record with audio but I won't complete all of that right now so I'm going to delete that one remember I go back down if I get anything wrong I can just simply hit the minus sign while it's highlighted in green and that's gone let's see what we'll actually have I'm going to have two entries here both of which are checked and one will say built-in output the other one will say black hole 16 channel so just to round up you should now have built-in microphone built-in output the black hole entry here and QuickTime and screen record don't forget you need to rename these exactly as I have done here so that when we go and I'll just come out of that when we go to the speaker icon at the top now we should see but if you're doing what I'm doing here, you have got screen record with audio, you've got an entry for black hole 16 channel, you've got QuickTime player. And the way that we set this up to make the recordings is we go down to the bottom one, sound preferences. And let's go to input first. So in my input entry, you'll see that my microphone is registering on this input level monitor here. I have selected QuickTime Player. Don't remember. Don't worry if you don't remember all of this. It's going to be in a written document as well, so that you can check through that without stopping and starting this video. So you've got three entries here. You're selecting QuickTime Player. Now we're going to Output, and you'll see. In fact, as I am recording this, I've already got Screen Record with Audio selected, and that's the setting. To do exactly what I'm doing here. Uh, now you'll notice that at the moment, back up in the toolbar, the speaker icon is greyed out. It's because I'm actually set to screen record with audio and if I go back to headphones later on to hear this again, that will become uh, a full black colour. So I can't show you that right now because otherwise this video wouldn't work. So. Just check that you've got those things in place if you want to check the written document and find it easier to go with that. Alternatively, go through this video and stop and start as you need in order to get your settings correct. And I hope that's really helped you because from this point on, if everything is the same on your computer as this one, then you'll be able to record any content that you see on screen. So just to finish up here today, uh, I'd like to show you how to return your computer to normal operation. Uh, you may find, for example, you can't hear anything through the speakers or the headphones when you play back material. Uh, sometimes you can hear it, but it may not work quite as you would expect. So if I click on that speaker icon again, you'll be deselecting QuickTime Player and going back to headphones. Similarly, you can go into Sound Preferences and look at the output and return that to headphones. Do it that way if you wish. And the input, you might want to go back to internal microphone if you purely want to use that. So that's how you'd return to your normal settings. Uh, now, you may be thinking this is quite complex to set up. You've got this far. Well done. One last thing, if you want to spend money on this, then exactly what I showed you with the download of the black hole driver which was completely free well here is a commercial offering that does pretty much the same thing uh, still a little bit complex to work out what you're doing and that will set you back two hundred dollars so um, a few minutes spent following the instructions that I've given you here today will save you a lot of money and you can use everything you already own so good luck with that and I wish you every success in making your lessons.